Aloha, I'm Rosalyn Klinger Bowen. I'm a researcher at the University of Hawaii and have been working in aquaculture for about 30 years, primarily doing fish health and disease diagnosis. This presentation, Aquaculture Biosecurity, is part of the University of Hawaii at Manoa College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources Virtual Livestock Industry Field Day Series. There are about 400 aquatic species that are cultured around the world, freshwater to marine, fish, invertebrates, and algae. Culture of the aquatic species can be used for human consumption, the ornamental pet trade, as well as medical and food additive applications. No matter what is aquacultured, most of the management strategies are similar. We're primarily going to focus on fish today, but realize this presentation has general applications for other aquatic species. You must employ good management strategies to prevent disease. This includes keeping the environment for your cultured species healthy, proper nutrition, and diligent cleaning skills. These qualities are just a part of the larger picture, biosecurity measures. What is biosecurity? It is using the skills that not only protects the animal, but you and your workers from harmful pathogens and disease. Harmful biological agents or pathogens are organisms that will cause from minor distress to the animal all the way up to population mortalities. These can be of parasitic, bacterial, viral, or fungal origin. The biosecurity protocols are established practices intended to keep pathogens away from animals and humans. There are three principles of biosecurity. First, Take measures to prevent pathogens from even entering your facility. Second, if pathogens do get in, have measures in place to reduce the spread from system to system. And third, reduce further susceptibility of spread by eliminating stresses. Let's look at each of these principles more closely. The first principle, preventing the introduction. Anyone or anything that can transfer pathogens are called vectors it is important to know what those potential vectors are and how to control them. Possible vectors include new fish stocks or fish eggs, feral animals like rats and snails, domestic animals, chickens, ducks, dogs, vehicles, your water source, live feeds, and people. Optimal fish health management includes preventing the disease from occurring rather than treating the problem after it occurs. Let's look at each of these possible vectors. For new fish stocks, know where the fish originated. Ask for health documentation if possible. Hiring a fish health professional to look at them when they arrive on your facility is also beneficial to make sure that they are healthy. Always quarantine new fish stocks and eggs. Live feeds, such as brine shrimp and moena, are often used to feed fish fry. Acquire live feeds through a reputable dealer or even better, culture them yourself. Keep domestic animals away from the systems with barriers such as fencing. Wild animals can transfer pathogens by entering your system through the water, biological filtration, or fish. Some animals can carry pathogens that are zoonotic, meaning they can pass to humans. Have precautions in place, such as netting, noisemakers, or shiny streamers to discourage birds. Use traps for rats and snails. People arriving on your facility can be pathogen carriers due to exposure outside your facility. Ask visitors to park outside the periphery of your facility. Vehicles such as hauling trucks can also be sources for contamination. Trucks should be disinfected prior to coming onto your facility. Also, make sure these visitors and or trucks have not been at another facility besides their own for at least 24 hours prior to coming onto your property. Natural water sources, such as streams, should be exposed to ultraviolet or chlorination. If chlorination is used, the water must be dechlorinated before it enters your fish tank. Set up foot baths at the door entrances and or at the farm gates. The second principle of biosecurity is preventing the spread. If a pathogen does enter your facility, you need to reduce the spread as much as possible. As with the first principle, have control over domestic and wild animals as well as people away from the contaminated system. Each system should have dedicated equipment, 
put in the nets, air lines, or air stones. Some producers use an all-in, all-out policy where the animals are stocked, grow out, and harvested all together. There's no mixing of stocks. If possible, assign a worker only for that contaminated system and make sure he or she doesn't go near the other systems. Again, always have a quarantine system for new arrivals. Another way to prevent spread is disinfect the equipment used for a system. Particularly after harvest, nets, airlines, air stones, and anything that was used in the harvested system should be disinfected. A disinfectant's effectiveness is dependent on a number of factors, such as type and concentration of that disinfectant. Some disinfectants work best at certain temperatures and pH ranges. Contact time is the duration the disinfectant can kill certain pathogens. Change disinfectant often to prevent buildup or organic matter, which would lessen the efficacy of the disinfectant. The pathogen itself can influence the effectiveness, such as the pathogen's life stage or sheer number. Follow the disinfectant's label as well as USDA guidelines to see what works best for what pathogen. Chlorine bleach at 200 parts per million is, can be used, but use it only as a dip as it can damage nets. Furcon is a common veterinary disinfectant. It is EPA approved, works on a wide range of pathogens, relatively safe to use, and breaks down easily. However, it is expensive when compared to bleach. It is essential to quarantine new fish stocks or a system that has sick fish. A quarantine tank or system needs to be away from all the other systems with their own dedicated equipment and preferably one worker or needs to be tended to last in the facility. Water chemistry, specifically temperature and pH, needs to be similar from the arriving fish bag or hauling tank system water to the quarantine tank. Acclimate the fish to the new system. Incoming fish with the water can contain pathogens that could ultimately affect other fish and humans. Bag or hauling water should be considered effluent and should be disposed of properly down the drain. An added preventative measure would be to dip new freshwater fish for about 30 seconds in a 0.5 to 1% salt solution prior to introducing them to the new system. For marine fish, you would dip 30 seconds in fresh water. This can help control parasites on the fish's external surfaces. How long the fish stay in quarantine depend on the fish's behavior and appearance, but the rule of thumb is 30 days, as most pathogens will be evident if they are present. Establish protocols such as water chemistry monitoring, feeding schedules, and observation of fish behavior or appearance for disease presence. During this time, it can be advantageous to hire a fish health professional or an aquatic veterinarian to examine your fish. The third principle is to reduce susceptibility of pathogens to fish by eliminating the stressors. This includes good husbandry skills, such as proper fish nutrition, avoiding overcrowding, good water quality, removing sick and dying fish, and good sanitation practices. Do you think the fish in this picture are stressed? Transportation of fish is an unavoidable stress, no matter the distance, whether it's within your facility or to another farm. Therefore, it's important to minimize handling stress. There are species differences in how an individual population are resilient to transportation stress. For example, striped bass are sensitive to handling, whereas tilapia less so. Have adequate water volume for transportation. Overstocking the hauling tank will cause stress and injury to the fish via spine punctures or bruising. Some fish fare better under a low sedation with a buffered MS-222 solution. Salt at 0.5 to 1% may also help as it helps with osmoregulation during transport. Fish should be observed throughout the day. The best time is during feeding when you can note behavior. Are the fish feeding aggressively? or do they appear sluggish or frightened upon your approach? Besides noting behavioral signs, observe if any individual is isolating from the rest of the population. Note any fish with any lesions, frayed fins, or growths or spots. Timely records of anything out of the unusual 
will assure prompt response. Whether your system is inside or outside, ponds or tanks, the surrounding area should be free of debris, unnecessary equipment, and standing water. Outside, remove lumber, unnecessary system parts, and keep grass trimmed to deter pests. Inside, the area should be swept with no obstructions around the system. This is also a safety precaution for you and your workers. A separate area should be designated for equipment parts and disinfectant for the nets and gear. A separate break area for eating as well as washrooms should be made available. Implement practices for the workers to wash their hands before and after entering the aquaculture area. Because of possible zoonotic diseases, occupational health and safety training for you and your workers should be made available. Identify and provide training about the potential hazards related to any fish activity. Reduce exposure to infection by wearing gloves during fish handling and use nets to avoid bite or fin spine injuries. Euthanasia using decapitation methods exposes the worker to injury from sharp objects such as knives. Make sure workers follow label directions when using chemicals, whether for disinfection, euthanasia, or treatments. Chemical usage should be used in well-ventilated areas and wearing the proper protective clothing. There are a few pathogens that can cause disease in humans called zoonotics. They're passed on by contact of handling the fish or water. The bacteria listed here are prevalent as most are ubiquitous in the environment. They can infect humans who are immunocompromised or when we have cuts or sores on our hands if we don't wear gloves during the fish handling. The rat lungworm is a nematode, Angiostrongylus continensis, and the bacteria Leptospirosis are not pathogens of fish, but they can be spread by rats and other animals that come in contact with the water. Use rat traps and snail deterrent to mitigate against the nematode and the Leptospirosis bacteria from entering your system. Train all workers with the standard operating procedures, or SOPs, that you want accomplished so everyone is knowledgeable and comfortable with your facility. Water chemistries and feeding schedule should be recorded along with workers' initials, the date and time of observation. Note any feeding, behavioral, or physical changes to the fish. Record any mechanical changes, such as water exchange, air pump functions, or when stocking new fish. Should a problem arise, good records will point to why and when things went wrong at the earliest stages. Some farmers also record all visitors that enter the facility as an added precaution. So why should we do all these biosecurity measures? It will help greatly in the long term. If you do not apply these measures, you will have the potential to lose money due to the loss of fish and therefore marketing ability. There will be costs in doing diagnostics should you have to hire a fish health professional or veterinarian. There will also be diversion of the time spent by your personnel, lower production quality of your surviving fish, and potentially missed markets.